Hey guys, Eckhart Slaughter here with another episode of Star Wars Starship vs. the Series, where we take two, or I guess sometimes more, of your favorite Star Wars spaceships, put them head to head, and see which one would come out on top. Last week's episode was pretty fun. We had the Venator Star Destroyer going against the Victory Star Destroyer, and it was the second episode where I asked you guys to vote on the result after I gave my reasoning. I said that I thought the Venator would win about eight and a half times out of 10, and you guys agreed with me because 86% of you guys thought that the Venator would win in a one-on-one -on -one battle. 10% of you guys voted for the victory, 2% of you voted for it's too close to tell. Just looking at that, I think that leaves 2% missing, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. My goal last time was to get over a thousand votes and you guys blew that out of the water. 2,158 of you at the time of my recording this video have voted, that is insane. So thank you very much. Make sure you guys vote again in this video. I would like to hopefully get over a thousand. I think that this one may be a bit more controversial. Okay, anyway, on to today's match. And I'm just gonna say, this one is a little bit loony. We're looking at 100 Super Star Destroyers versus the Death Star. And this was requested by Starbat861. And since he didn't specify, I'm gonna guess that when he says Super Star Destroyers, he means Executor, just the standard Super Star Destroyer variant. And when he said Death Stars, since he didn't classify, I'm gonna use the Death Star 1. So as always, I'm gonna evaluate this matchup based on several criteria, weaponry, defensive capabilities, fighter support, and then intangibles. And just because one group of ship wins one category or even up to three categories, doesn't necessarily mean that it wins the day because I'm looking at these two groups overall. All right, I think you guys all know what the Death Star is, and I'm sure you guys all know what a Super Star Destroyer is. These are both super weapons, basically, of the Empire, so I'm not gonna go too far in depth into what these two ships can do. I will say, for the purpose of this battle, the Executor is not aware of the weak point within the Death Star. Also, because I know more about the material, we're gonna focus on the Legends version of both of these ships. All right, so let's look at weaponry, and this one is interesting because we've got the Super Laser of the Death Star versus the sheer number of weapons that 100 Executors would have. So let's first talk about the Executor, and as I said, they've got sheer numbers on their side. With 100 of those ships, they would have over 400,000 turbo and heavy turbo lasers. The Death Star's main weapon, of course, was its super laser, and well, it could destroy a whole planet, the power level could vary depending on the target, and the entire planet-destroying power would not be needed to take down a simple Super Star Destroyer. So at this lower setting, the Death Star could probably fire every minute or every couple of minutes. Still, there are a few major downsides that this weapon has. I mean, it only points in one direction, so if the 100 executors would kind of go around the ship, only certain ones would actually be in sight of the main laser. The Empire tried to protect against situations like this, for example, at the Battle of Endor, where they used their fleet to keep the rebels in place. However, with just 100 capital ships and nothing stopping them, the executors would most likely fan out, so only some would be actually visible to the Death Star's laser, if any. I mean, the Death Star is still pretty well armed with tens of thousands of turbo lasers. However, again, most of them are centered around the equatorial trench. And while tens of thousands of turbo lasers are impressive, they're not as impressive as hundreds of thousands. And although the Death Star Super Laser is a very impressive weapon, it's more effective against stationary objects rather than mobile ships. So I'll give this category to the Executor. All right, so next we have shielding, and this one is kind of interesting as well because you would expect the Death Star to be very well shielded. And even in A New Hope, there's a line that's saying nothing larger than a snub fighter will really be useful against the Death Star. But let's remember, the Rebel Alliance did not have 100 Super Star Destroyers at their disposal. The fact of the matter is, the Death Star relied more on its hull strength and on its defensive weaponry systems and its fighters than it did any sort of shielding, and the actual shielding on the Death Star was pretty minimal. I mean, there is some sort of ray shield that the X-Wings fly through at the beginning of the Battle of Yavin, but once they're through, they can be seen to do direct damage to the ship themselves. And what I mean by that is this. On several occasions, X-Wings take strafing runs against the battle station, and they very clearly do real damage. As you can see troops within the station being rocked, you can see laser emplacements being destroyed. So it's quite obvious that conventional weapons, whether it's missiles, lasers, whatever, can do damage to the ship and that there's no real shield to speak of. And this is confirmed by other sources, and again, it's because so much of the ship is dedicated to housing that gigantic super laser. The individual executors, on the other hand, would have been extremely well shielded and would have had a very strong hull. Still, this is kind of a weird one because the shielding on each ship isn't cumulative in the same way that firepower is. 
and we also know that the shielding won't do any good against the super laser so i'm just going to call this one a tie all right next we have fighter support i'm going to keep this one pretty brief because both of these ships would have used the exact same star fighters and really the only comparison here is a pure numbers game so the death star carried 7,000 tie fighters and these would have mostly been the regular tie brand the tie interceptors and probably some tie bombers as well the executor on the other hand carried at minimum 150 TIE Fighters. So with 100 Executors, that's over 15,000 TIE Fighters. So very briefly, I'll give this category to the 100 Executors. Now it's time for the actual battle itself. And I'll talk about the intangibles during the battle because this whole battle really is gonna be intangibles. So obviously one of the main considerations here is the Death Star's Super Laser. And upon seeing the total destruction of Aldron, Han Solo says that a thousand starships with more firepower than he'd ever seen wouldn't be able to do such a thing. Now, I don't necessarily think that's accurate, that's probably Han Solo not quite knowing what he's talking about, but a Death Star, even on its lowest settings, would be able to most likely one-shot an Executor-class Super Star Destroyer. However, on the other hand, Super Star Destroyers are very comfortable bombing things that look like planets, as we see in the Imperial's use of the base Delta Zero technique. Now, it's true that they probably wouldn't be able to blow a planet up to complete smithereens like the Death Star does, but that's really not what's necessary in this battle. I mean, all they really need to do is crack the crust of the Death Star, you know, break it open, something like that. It's not a planet, it's a spaceship. So here's how I think the battle would go down. 100 Super Star Destroyers jump in and see a Death Star. The Death Star probably takes one or two pot shots with its super laser, which can most likely recharge in minutes. These shots would destroy any ships unlucky enough to get in its path. At that point, kind of like the Rebels did during the Battle of Endor, the Super Star Destroyers would probably try to get out of range of the laser. I think they'd do this by spreading their ships around the Death Star, so the space station wouldn't really be able to concentrate on them all at once. They can maybe take down one or two ships at a time before having to readjust, but no more than that. I think then they would take full advantage of their wedge shape, put all weapons forward, and just give it to the Death Star. They would also launch all their ships, who would probably go on strafing runs through the Death Star's trench. And given that they have more fighters than the Death Star, they should be able to get air superiority pretty quickly. And again, just look back to A New Hope. We see how much damage just a single strafing run can do to the inside of the Death Star. They'll need to sustain that over a long period of time, but after a while, they should be able to take the ship down. And a lot of that comes from the fact that while it's still pretty well armed, the surface of the Death Star is not as well armed as the standard Executor class Star Destroyer. And really, if the ships are positioned tactically, I think they could really take advantage of spots where the Death Star is less well protected. And of course, if an Executor goes down, they should really try to ram the Death Star, kind of like what happened in the Battle of Endor, and again, we saw just how much damage that did. In conclusion, while the Death Star Super Laser is extraordinarily powerful and it will have some effect on the battle, there's just too many ships for it to properly manage, and we see that, especially the original Death Star, is pretty slow at targeting, it doesn't move very fast. So 100 ships should be able to outmaneuver it pretty easily. And the executors just have too much firepower. It's overwhelming and they'll be able to basically park above the ship and just rain hell down on the Death Star. And the Death Star is well armed and has a lot of fighters, but not enough to repel firepower of that magnitude. In conclusion, I give this battle to the 100 executors 10 times out of 10. I think more interesting would be 10 versus the Death Star. That would be a lot closer and maybe I'll do that someday. Right now, you guys can vote on who you think would win in this matchup. And of course, go down in the comments and let me know what you thought of my analysis. And as always, don't forget to let me know what matchup you want to see next. And if you see a matchup that you think looks cool, make sure to give it a thumbs up and a supporting comment because that's how I choose my upcoming video topics. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, let me know this. Do you think Han Solo is right in that a thousand of the Empire starships couldn't destroy a planet the same way that the Death Star did? Or do you think he's kind of just a smuggler out of touch with the true power of the Empire? Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. May the Force be with you.